Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. This showed up yesterday. I have about eh, 12 hours um, kind of using this printer and I wanted to make an initial impressions video for all of you. Um, I, I really do like the printer. It took me a little bit to warm up to it. There was a some quirks and, and things like that that were a bit unexpected. Nothing major or anything like that, but I did want to go over a couple things here. Um, this isn't a review. I do plan on doing multiple videos about this printer, kind of showing how I use it, that type of thing. So the packaging of this printer, very, very good. Uh, props to Bamboo Labs on the packaging. There's just a couple details that I didn't really like with it. Uh, again, minor things. This is the accessory kit that you get with the printer. And, you know, they definitely spent some time and they put some details into packaging this. However, adding the Allen keys seemed like it was an afterthought. And there's not really a spot for them. And they were just kind of like laying in the back. Initially, I didn't think there was any Allen keys or any tools included. Um, so that, that was a little bit odd to me. Again, not a deal breaker by any means. No big deal. Props to Bamboo Labs for including a bunch of spares, um, like a spare hot end, a guide tube, you know, thermal paste, uh, all that kind of stuff. Like, uh, really, really good uh, from that standpoint. But you definitely had some room here. You could have made some spots for the Allen keys to go just so they weren't rattling around inside type thing. They do uh, include two extra um, kind of build sheets there for it as well. Um, the next issue I had was attaching the spool holder. The screws that come with the spool holder, either the screws or the threads here, were not that great. And I was very, very sure I was going to strip those. I didn't, luckily. Um, so just be cautious. Um, make sure you end the, use the small end of your Allen key to turn to tighten those down. Don't use the ball end. Um, you most likely will strip those screws or the Allen key um, if you do that. So just two notes there on kind of the assembly and packaging. One other odd thing too about the printer was they have a quick start guide here. And the quick start guide is not very clear about the filament loading procedure, which is a little bit odd to me. Um, it basically just says insert the filament into the PTFE tube. Um, keep pushing until it can't move forward. That's it. Um, there's no like load button or filament load procedure or anything like that that I could find. Now, I definitely could have missed something, but even like on the interface here, there's just an unload. And I'm pretty sure with no filament in the system, it still said unload. So... I think I had to manually extrude it through or something like that. Like, just very, very odd. Again, some details definitely missed. Um, I would for sure say that this is the weak point to the Bamboo Labs X1, is the firmware and software for sure. I think uh, definitely this is a hardware company um, trying to make software and firmware, in my opinion. Um, so... Again, it just minor annoyances that hopefully will get better as this uh, company and product matures. But that's kind of that on packaging. Um, another thing is, uh, I really think this is pointless. Um, like this is the you know, your typical sample roll of filament that you get with printers. But to come on like a full spool, just for that much filament, just just omit it. Don't don't bother including that. Um, there's just no point. You could probably save someone packaging and, and things like that. So again, just a little bit annoying there. Um, as far as the interface, setting the printer up was relatively straightforward. I'm a little bit disappointed that there is no 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi on this uh, main board or uh, solution that they're using. Now, Yes, 2.4 gigahertz does have more range, but if they spent the time to develop their own main board um, or at least spec this stuff out specifically for this printer, 
they could have got a dual band Wi-Fi um, board for this, I'm sure. Um, there might be some people out there that don't have their 2.4 um, network turned on and they're just running 5 gigahertz. So again, it's just, it, it should have 5 gigahertz uh, in my opinion on this. So again, something just to kind of nitpick there. Um, the interface as a whole is definitely okay. Uh, could be a little bit better. Um, it took me a little while to figure out that this was the speed. Um, it just says 100%. But when you click on it, it then gives you text. So it's it's very weird. I, per, I would prefer this to just say standard. At least I would have probably known that this maybe was speed versus, you know, something like that. So again, a little bit odd. I would like to see a little bit more info, like how fast the printer is printing and that type of thing. Again, this is me coming from Clipper, obviously, and being more of an advanced user, but I don't think it would hurt to expose that kind of information. Um, another issue or another weird thing about the printer is under calibration, not all the calibration is here for some reason. Uh, on the printer, there's just calibrate flow. Um, but in the phone app, you can actually do a full calibration, it seems. So again, I don't know why that is. It's just an oddity with the firmware software that definitely needs to be improved. Um, another issue I had with the printer, uh, when I first tried to print with it, it will not print on this table. I cannot get the printer to print on this table. This is an Amazon desk. Um, it's a metal kind of frame. It's, it's not too bad. I definitely print on this all the time. I've ran input shaper on this with clipper. Um, this printer fails to home on this printer because of the vibration calibration that it does. It errors out. Um, the error is not very clear. Um, took me a little bit to figure out that I had to put it on the floor and then the printer prints. Um, again, just a little bit more time spent on the firmware. Um, I am a little biased, obviously. Uh, it would have been amazing if this printer shipped with Clipper. Uh, I know, you know, Clipper everything, uh, that type of thing, but uh, even RepRap firmware, like even just a well-established firmware, I think Bamboo Labs would have saved a bunch of money and time by just going with a pre-existing firmware, especially Clipper or RepRap firmware. Um, they both have input shaping and all that kind of stuff, and, I, and I'm sure they could have got the LiDAR to work. So again, to me, a little bit of a missed opportunity, even for beginners and advanced users, I think this printer would be a really good gateway to getting users into Clipper. And also it would give advanced users more control of their printer. So again, that's a little bit of a missed um, opportunity in my opinion. Again, definitely I am biased. I have a Clipper focused channel. Um, so you know, that's just my thoughts on that. The build plate, um, actually really impressed with this. Initially, I was uh, pretty annoyed that they shipped with glue stick in 2022. I thought that was pretty archaic. However, um, I guess the glue stick is so that the parts come off. It's not to keep the parts stuck to the bed. It's to actually make it so the parts release. This build plate is actually really good. Um, and the glue stick is to help it so parts come off, which I guess I'm okay with. Um, it seems to work very, very well. I'm very happy with it. And it is flexible, so you can just pop the parts off. And they stick really, really well. I'm really happy with it, actually. So that really surprised me. Um, really, really neat with that. I've just been printing on the cold plate. Um, and that's kind of a, a cool thing too, is the cold plate, um, it kind of does print PLA cold. Uh, it only heats the bed up to 35 degrees for PLA, which is actually really awesome for people printing PLA. Once your part's done, you can just immediately take the build plate off, pop your part off and start printing again. It's super, super nice. Um, you know, for people who want to just print PLA, this is a great machine. Yeah, it's a 
$1,200 Canadian machine just to print PLA, but it's amazingly capable at that. So that was just something neat that I didn't really see on a lot of videos was the cold plate kind of printing temperature for PLA. ABS and ASA and stuff like that, it would still, it'll still get to the 80, 90 degrees, but for PLA, awesome. Um, for the print quality on this printer. So I printed off this Benchy with the, the sliced file that was already on the printer. Um, actually a lot of files come on this printer already. Um, I haven't tried really any of these. Um, actually some pretty cool ones. Uh, I definitely need to try these out. Um, so I just printed the, the Benchy here. Um, it's not a perfect Benchy. This is Silk PLA, Polymaker Silk. And it probably wants to print a bit slower than this, to be honest. It's, it's definitely a decent Benchy for sure. It was your, this is the fabled 17 minute, 17 minute Benchy or whatever. Um, definitely very nice, uh, not perfect. There's definitely ringing and stuff like that, but it's due to the silk PLA. Um, that's also very apparent in this part here too. You can definitely see a lot of ringing. I did run the vibration calibration before printing this as well. And it's just, this is too fast for silk PLA. It just shows these artifacts really, really well. Um, once I switched over to regular Polymaker PLA, I, the, the prints are literally flawless. Like they're really, really, really nice prints. So I am very, very happy. And something I really wanted to do was I wanted to show this printer printing off a mechanical part that I made. And um, yeah, the, the print quality is awesome. This even had supports right in here. Um, and the supports came out really well. You can't even tell that there was supports in the bottom. All the holes are absolutely perfect. The, the layer adhesion is excellent. Um, the part cooling on this printer is perfect. Really, really, really happy with this for a PLA machine for sure. The build quality is awesome. We'll talk about the motion system maybe in a second video. Um, but this was just kind of a, a first initial impressions. Um, I do really like the printer. And I think, honestly, if there's some people on the fence about getting a Voron Trident, uh, like a 250 size Voron Trident, this would be a really, really good second choice for you. I know... There may be slightly different scenarios. I know Vorons are typically like your ABS workhorse and like a DIY kind of do it yourself. Whereas this is like, hey, just unbox it and print. But this has a really good nozzle wiping and a really good starting print procedure so that you can just close this printer click print and literally just walk away. You don't have to worry about oozing or first layer or anything like that. This has honestly been really, really awesome to me for that. So, you know, I, I do really think this is a cool, maybe a, a good option for a second choice. If someone is again on the fence about a Trident, they are basically the same price. This was $1,200 Canadian and my Formbot Trident was I think a little bit more than $1,200 Canadian shipped. So I guess, again, this is the Kickstarter price. So I don't know why it would be Canadian to print to buy it off their store, but it's just something to consider. Parts for this printer are also very cheap too. So again, thanks everyone for watching. This is just a very fast initial unboxing, 12-hour initial impressions. Uh, I like the printer. Stay tuned for more videos on this and I am going to compare this to some of my other builds just for fun. Um, thanks to all the new subscribers. Definitely feel free to join my Discord. I have a channel for this printer on there. You want to talk about things, ask me questions, maybe you want to see some prints on this printer, that type of thing. So thanks again everyone.